let's take a look at OBS and I want to just make it a little bit more clear how to jump in and start using it. So one thing that people get hung up on is studio mode. So studio mode is just a way of previewing your content before it goes live. So think about program as your main output and preview as what you're kind of queuing up that you're going to send out to the main output, um, what you plan to send out next. Now, studio mode's off. You've just got your main output. So whatever you click on is going to go out. Um, otherwise, with studio mode, you can kind of prep it before it goes out. So next, you need to think about sources. And this gets really confusing for folks because, A, if you don't even think about the word source being where you would put your webcam, you know, it can be just a bit confusing, like, mm, what do I do? Where do I go? And, and then if you get curious about sources and you, and you click, you don't see the word webcam, and then that's a bit disorienting. And maybe you see video capture device. Mm, maybe that's a fancy word for webcam. But then when you click on that, it's like, oh, I don't see my webcams listed. Maybe you bail at that point because it's like, you don't want to mess anything up. But let me just tell you, this is exactly where you need to be. And so if you do Sony A6400, which is the name of my camera, you should give it a good name. Um, it helps with clarity later because this is going to show up in your list of sources and you may want to reuse it in the future. Once you do that, then you are going to see all these familiar device names. And there's my camera. And if you've seen any of my videos before, you notice that I'm generally a bit more zoomed in. You can't see my lights and things. So let's go ahead and do that. So that was pretty easy. I just did that really quick. Now, the, you can also crop. On Windows, you hold down Alt, and on Mac, you hold down Control. But, um, but you know, if it's zoomed out past the edges, you're not gonna, no one's gonna see it. And so here, I can turn right and transition over to that, and now that would be coming out of my live stream and going into Zoom or wherever I've got configured this to go to, configured this to go to. Now, the next thing I want to show you is adding another scene. And so I like to um, add my camera to another scene. So I would go to video capture device again and select an existing device. So the A6400 that I'd already previously selected. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this, um, this um, scene to Sony just to make it clear that that's my Sony. And then here, I'm going to rename this to Sony Alpha. And the reason I'm going to call it Sony Alpha is because now I'm going to apply a filter to the scene. And it's important that I apply the filter to the scene because if I apply the filter to the source, it will apply to both scenes because I've got the same source in both scenes. So that's why I add the camera to two different scenes. And then I'm going to add a um, an effect to one of them. And that effect is the mask. And what I'm going to do here is select alpha channel because my mask is an alpha channel mask. And unfortunately my window got changed on me. So let me just change this really fast and then get back in here. So there we are. We've got a mask. Now, if you had a circle with a, with a different background color, you could choose that color as well. It, there's many ways to do it, but um, I'm using this. Now, now I can apply. Now, anytime I want to go full screen, I can do this. Anytime I want to put a circle version of that same source somewhere, I can lay it in top of another scene. So let's just call this, I don't know, let's call this mural because I'm going to put myself over top of the mural. So, first, I want to add into the display capture. Um, actually, I take that back. Display capture is going to grab the whole monitor. I just want a window capture that is going to grab my mural. I'm going to name it mural. Uh, window and then I will look here for this untitled mural the first thing I'm going to do is like throw it up drag it up here and then zoom on out so that you know I've got it nice and big and so we, we can see the whole mural and then I'm going to add a reference to another scene which is my Sony Alpha scene and now I'm, I'm really big here and I'm going to make it smaller and so now there I am. So that's really nifty. Now note, if you wanted to, um, you could re, you could make, you could resize it and whoops. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Um, yes. Um, you can position it here 
and um, and and, uh, and uh, impact all the places where you might have this located on a different uh, on a different scene. Now we'll notice that you want to make sure you have the right thing selected when you move it, and there is no undo in OBS, unfortunately. Now the next thing I wanted to show you was how to even now get it into Zoom because these are your basics, right? Um, now to get it in Zoom, you're going to want to install something called NDI Virtual Output. You'll get to your NDI Output settings here, and um, you will click on that. Um, I need to bring the window down so you can see it. You'll click on Main Output. Make sure that's enabled. You could also stream your preview output places, but you don't have to worry about that for OB, for um, Zoom. Just stream the main output. Um, I don't worry about renaming it. If you find it helpful, you can. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull in a video that will help you understand how to get in NDI. Now, once you install NDI virtual input from NDI.org, you will have an app that you can run. You click on it, and then in the assist tray, you can right-click on the icon, select the right PC, select the right output, check your video settings, check your audio settings, and then you will be good to go to go into Zoom. And when you're inside Zoom, you're now going to select NDI as your input to your webcam. So all you do is you go here and you select NDI. And there I am. That's me coming through Zoom and NDI. So if I were to come over here and transition this here and come back to, um, to Zoom, which I need to use a different keyboard. And let me just pop Zoom up. There, are, there we see we've got this and I can, I can just kind of um, make this smaller so that you can see zoom back there and then you can see me transitioning the latency is not bad at all because um, you know whenever you use an NDI you want to make sure you're using Ethernet or either on the same machine so that you're not having any Wi-Fi delays um, and then NDI also um, carries audio so you'll notice I've got um, uh, NDI audio set up as my audio source so that way, anything that I'm mixing here in the audio with NDI is coming through and, and, uh, and the Zoom. So that is everything I wanted to show you with NDI. Um, maybe I will also mention that scene collections are a handy way to collect up different scenes for different purposes. So maybe you have a, a workshop scene where you run workshops. Maybe you have a scenes for recording videos um, for, for classes or different, different purposes, right? So this is my workshop scene collection. And, um, notice I have a lot more scenes in there. I started out with this empty for just the demo for you, but you know, I can, I can switch to my standby scene and note that my stream deck doesn't love preview mode. So that's why that didn't work so well, but, um, that's that. And then speaking of the stream deck, this is the software for the stream deck. So you can see I've got a lot of different keys where I can bring up different um, different things, whether it's a timer or maybe it's um, you know a screen share, which this that screen is is um, is there for you. But um, I can bring myself visible and change where where I've got it positioned, um, and then you know bring up a di different camera angles, etc. So that's really the the power of OBS. That's how to set it up. That's how to get it into Zoom, and thanks for listening.